Okay, so I need to make some changes. Spring is so very nearly here now, I have no more excuses. I need to sort myself out. I need to sort out my eating. Winter has pretty much passed. I have no excuse now for the rate at which I've been snacking over the last few weeks. It all has to stop now. So, I need to stop eating all the processed rubbish that I'm getting in my cheap supermarket hauls. And by that I mean the stuff at the bakery counter, the bread, the hot cross buns, all that sort of thing. I need to stop buying it. Mince pies, no more mince pies please. So that all now needs to stop. I need to stop grazing as much as I do. So my eating routine at the moment is I do intermittent fasting which has kept things under control a lot and I've been really good about that. So I don't eat before 11am and I don't eat after 6. But it's what I'm doing in between so I'll do lunch at 12 and lunch will be a good lunch. It'll be one of my one pan dishes, it'll be all vegetables and some meat, whatever. Um, dinner is smaller and tends to be okay. It's what I'm doing in between. It's the grazing that I'm doing in between lunch and dinner that is the problem. And it's only a big problem because of what I buy. And it shouldn't be that difficult if I base it on budget. So I didn't spend a lot of money on food last year. I think my whole budget was about I don't know, 120, 128 pounds for the year because I buy everything on discount, cashback apps, all that sort of thing. And my small food budget, along with all my other small budgets because of my low income, keeps me in check. I don't buy takeaways, I don't go out to eat in restaurants, I don't get coffee on the go, I don't snack on the go. So I am capable of saying no to stuff when it has a like a financial um, number against it. So theoretically, if I stopped buying all the the process, the carbs, like the bread and all those sorts of things, if I stopped buying that in the supermarket, my budget would be even smaller. And if I stopped buying all that sort of food and say, right, well, if I want bread... <coughs> excuse me, if I want bread, if I want cake, I have to make it. And I have one baked session a week because of the price of energy, of electric. Then that should put me in check. But I am a grazer. I am, I'm a comfort eater. I'm a boredom eater. I eat when I have time. I eat when I don't have time. I just like food. Food is my, food is my addiction. I'm not into alcohol. I don't have, uh, I don't smoke. I don't have a any drug addiction like half the people who seem to live around me and food is the thing I'm also not a fan of exercise I find it really boring I hate the routine of it so if I said okay every morning at eight o'clock I'm gonna go out for a half hour walk to get me going in the morning I would quickly get bored of that purely because of the routine of it so I need to work out how I'm going to address that. I think it'll be easier once the weather changes because it's going to be nicer and getting out when you're seeing, you know, the spring flowers and the birds and the sunshine and it's warmer. That will encourage me for sure, for definite. I know that. So that naturally will, will change. But I need to stop grazing in between meals and cut my eating down because that's the problem and because because I work from home I am largely sedentary and I don't go I'm not doing like a morning commute I'm not rushing around a lot of my work is creative so it's based working from a desk um, and all that sort of thing so there are the standard challenges that most office workers have particularly working from home where you're doing even less because you're not commuting to work 
So that all needs addressing and the best way for me to start addressing it is simply to get my eating under a bit more control. I don't want to obsess about it because the more I obsess about it the more I will probably eat. It's, it's, it's a, a standard thing where the more you think about something the more you do it as opposed to the opposite way around. So I'm trying to decide what's going to be the best way to adjust this. I could extend my intermittent fasting hours so I could instead of having my tea between five and six I could have it between four and five and I do I am finding that I am getting hung wanting my tea closer to four than five so I might give that a go that closes my hour my eating hours from seven to six hours and that may well help that might be a good start for me because I know that four o'clock is now becoming a, more of a tea time hour for me than five and I do find that once I know I've hit my intermittent fasting cutoff time in the evening I don't think about food it's really strange I have these cutoffs so when the windows open I just want to graze. When it's not open, I don't even think about food. It's very bizarre. And I want to get my weight down because I'm seeing so many things around me at the moment which remind me that looking after my health now that I'm reaching a certain age is really important. So the couple that I clean for um, she is vastly overweight and can't even get up the stairs without a stanner lift. She's 80, but my parents are almost 80. And they are slim, relatively fit. They have their issues. They're 80, or almost 80. Um, but the issues that they have are counterbalanced by the fact that they don't carry extra weight which is very hard on your joints. I have friends who are the same age as me who are quite overweight and have problems with joints and arthritis and other health issues and I am also at that age where the perimenopause is very much affected by your state of health. Your symptoms are likely to be worse if you are unhealthy. Lots of things can trigger it. The main things that trigger it for me are a lack of sleep, dehydration and alcohol. Now I'm not really a drinker anyway, so that's okay. So keeping on top of my sleep hours, which I've got into a nice routine now. I go to bed 11 um, and my, um, my alarm goes off at quarter past eight, although I'm usually awake by half seven. So, uh, so that's not generally a problem unless I've had a bad night for some reason. Um, the hydration is easy as long as I stick to my rule of two litres of water a day, which most days I can do, that seems to be in check. But the weight will also be a triggering factor, so not eating the right kinds of foods can be triggering, having too much weight on you, and you put on weight anyway when, you're, when your hormones change like that. I noticed in the first year where I started getting symptoms, my weight rocketed. Now, I have weighed myself quite a lot through last year and I did actually I did actually lose about 11 pounds last year and certainly up to when I weighed myself after I got back here after Christmas and New Year I hadn't put on any weight over Christmas which is almost a miracle but I haven't weighed myself since then and I daren't because the way I've been eating the last month or so, I dread to think how much I've put on. So I'm not going to weigh. I'm going to put my new eating plan into place, cut down on the processed rubbish, um, not buy things from the bakery section of Morrison's, uh, as in the cheap stuff like the bread and whatever. Try and avoid all of that. If it's not in the kitchen, I won't eat it. So that's my plan going forward. I can't eat it if I haven't bought it, if it's not in the cupboard. So I've got what I've got here at the moment, 
and I'm going to allow myself to work through that but on a lesser scale so instead of you know snacking between like one and three I'm just going to have like one thing mid-afternoon or something if I eat less I get used to eating less I get used to the feeling of not feeling full because when I'm snacking I'm when I'm doing that grazing in between lunch and dinner I'm not hungry I'm not hungry at all I know it's just all in, in my mind it's uh it's uh, uh I've I'm in between jobs, I've stopped, I've finished editing that video and now I have 10 minutes. Make a cup of tea, grab a biscuit, that sort of thing. And that needs to stop. And then when I get into the mindset of it, it's easy. When I get into the routine of not constantly reaching for food because I can, that changes. So I need to give that a go. I've done it before. Um, as the weather changes, I am going to start going out more. Uh, but I don't want to turn it into a routine. I can take you guys out on more walks. I've got um, nature reserves near me. Of course, I have the, the cemetery, which is nice and is, you know, right on the borders of um, of a like a, a nature reserve. So we get lots of interesting wildlife there. As the weather improves as well, I can go out and do more stuff. So I c we can go out and um, I have. A couple of trips planned that will be out in proper nature like one's going to be a hike one's going to be an exploration of somewhere I've never been I'm just waiting for the weather to improve I need to grab a day and hopefully that will help um, and I just need to get into a better routine which is helped by more daylight hours warmer weather it's the cold and the lack of daylight which is very triggering for me um, because seasonal affective disorder gets us all in different ways. We all want to go into a bit of semi-hibernation when it's really, really cold and the nights are dark. But it's now light when I wake up. It's not getting dark until after five o'clock. Once those nights start to draw out and those daylight hours start to increase, it changes so fast. So, time to make the positive changes. I've reached my snapping point. can't do this overeating anymore and it's a constant swings and roundabouts I've been you know going through these struggles pretty much since my teens because I've always been a foodie it's just the way I am it's what I'm wired for and it's a hard thing to overcome um, but we'll give it a go anyway so that's that's that update and I'm I'm probably going to set up a separate playlist for this and I might do specific videos based around that um, just to separate it off. We'll see how we get on. I'll put this into its own playlist for now and we'll see whether that works. Um, I don't want to like do loads and loads of, of videos on Oh, I'm losing weight and look at me exercising and all that stuff because um, I'm not that kind of person. And I think... Some people might find it useful, but a lot might think, oh God, what are you doing? So anyway, that's that update. That's me going to make some improvements, going to cut back on the rubbish, to try and get my weight under control because I don't want to be an old person who has to rely on the NHS because their health went downhill because they just couldn't stop snacking. I don't want to be that person because I see it around me and it's scary and I can't afford to be reliant on a system that can't help people because it's overwhelmed by people who just should have looked after themselves. I don't want to be one of those people that's burgeoning a system because I couldn't stop eating. Um, and I know it's very psychological, so people will say, oh, it's that's mental health, it's all that sort of thing. Maybe, um, but I have a responsibility to look after my own health. There's, there's, there's no reason why I can't do that. And it now has to happen. So um, I'm just going to finish off with, I've just been out, it's Thursday morning, so I've just been out to the post office to put money in the bank from yesterday's claim. I went past the little cafe that I often go past that has a table outside for all the stuff that's approaching its... Uh, used by dates and they can't use it in the cafe 
um, more peanut butter, stacks of peanut butter they have. So I bought two of those. Peanut butter is something I will keep having. Um, it's literally the only nuts that I have in my life. <laughs> and the proteins and stuff. I mean, I know that peanut butter probably isn't the healthiest of things, but I can't afford to buy packets of nuts. And I think this is a, a useful thing to have. Oh, they were a pound each, by the way. Um, green beans. Huge box of, bait of uh, green beans. I bought two. Uh, the best before the 17th, so they've got another day. And they look in really good luck. So I don't know why they're getting rid of those now. Um, these were 30 p each, so you won't get them cheaper than that in the shops. Uh, even on discount, probably. So that's a good addition. And that's healthy. And that's all I bought. All the mince pies have now gone. I know I was buying a lot of those when I went past. I was always buying a box or a couple of boxes. But because I knew that at some point it will just stop. And it looks like the mince pies have now gone. So that's the end of that. One more thing I can't eat because I can't buy it. And that's the mince pies. So I have a couple left in the, my last box. Which of course I'm going to eat. I'm not going to waste food just because. But I'm going to ration things out more. And not snack as much. So I'm going to head off and get on with work, sort out spreadsheets, um, I have videos to edit today and this, this afternoon I'm going to go for a, so this morning I've been to the post office, I've done that walk, this afternoon I'm going to go to, uh, I think I'm going to go to Sainsbury's because I need to buy a couple of cards and I'm going to get some things on my nectar points, doesn't cost me any money. So that would be the walk for the day. It's really weird today, it's really warm so it's 15 in the flat today hence the lack of jumpers and it's really close outside it's almost like there's like a big storm coming you know when it gets really warm and it's got to be at least 15 outside and it's really nice because I've got a few windows open get some fresh air in here and I can't wait till that all begins and I can start having windows open every day looking forward to that so it springs almost here as I keep saying because it really excites me Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.